don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I thought I would do another page in my Rogues Gallery collage kind of cluster art journal. So the last page that I did in this was the um, page which was a kind of sort of homage to my grandfather but not quite. Um, so I thought I would continue that same kind of military kind of style theme onto the next page. So I've gone through my collection of rogues if you like and I've pulled out two um, but these just happen to be navy. So I couldn't decide which one to use to start off with but on looking at it if I chose this one then both of those two rows will be looking over to my right. Not really aesthetically pleasing. Whereas if I use this one, then one would be looking over to the left, one would be kind of looking over to the right. So this one would have more balance. So I will put this one back into my little collection of rogues that I've got ready for another day. So, we're choosing him. So again, to carry on that kind of military feel, um, I'm going to use a green piece on this side. So I've got this lovely piece that's upside down. Grapes hang that way, not that way. Um, not that you're gonna see them. But I've got this nice kind of darkish green background that I'm gonna use for um, the base. So as per usual, I'm going to work on this one and then stick it all in together en masse. So we don't need that journal now. All we have to do is to work on this piece. I'm going to sit a bit closer to the table and grab my coffee. I've got to have my rocket fuel. So before we do anything then, we will make a start and just go around the edges, get rid of those raw white edges and just add a little bit or kind of distress and aging just around the edges just quickly just to help unify all the little pieces that we're going to stick together in the cluster to make them all kind of hang together a bit more so as I was saying um, I've gone for that kind of military kind of feel so we're going to be using greens and some highlights and pops of yellow in this one. So again, I've gone through my collection of digital ephemera, um, selected a few choice pieces out, kind of printed them out and cut them out ready to use. So there's gonna be the base, that's the first piece. So my next layer, if you like, is going to be this kind of old advert sheet. So again, just need to whip around the outside just to help unify, get rid of those raw white edges. And I'm not distressing this down on the worktop. I'm not laying it flat and then coming in at, you know, at an angle. I'm doing it up in the air because for me, I can come in at circle motion and I get just the right amount for me anyway, to my taste, of distress onto the page without taking too much of the image away or losing too much of that kind of image. And it still hides those raw white edges of your cluster items. And if you want darker corners, just go in and flick. And as you can tell by the sound of the paper or the sound of the the card but it is kind of heavy weightish cardstock this is 200 gsm I'm not kind of sure what that is in american but it's heavyweight cardstock not quite card base weight but thicker double the thickness of normal printer paper if you like so all right let's audition that first piece i want to put that right in the middle there so we've got that lovely kind of um, greenish border all the way around. So that's the first piece we're going to stick down. I'm going to use my Elmer's Purple just because I did try and use 
um, the white school glue recently um, on a project I did. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to make a Mother's Day card because it's Mother's Day coming up this weekend here in the UK. Um, but unfortunately it buckled <clears throat> the Elmer's white school glue buckled everything and it was I had to throw it I had to throw it away and start again right but I've never known this purple stuff to buckle or to cause your card to buckle so I'm going to stick with that for this Okay, so there's the first layer. Okay, so the next couple of pieces, now this is where we start to introduce that yellow. So I've got these kind of yellow ochre mustardy kind of pieces. And again, I'm just going to go around, get rid of those raw white, raw white edges. Just help to age them even more than they are already. So this one is the Ayers American Almanac dating from 1890 and this other piece is a an old scan of an old boxing poster again dating from Victor Victorian times but I'm not really sure oh there's the date 1887 there we go which is just absolutely perfect. So, I've got my main character. So let's just go around and give him a bit of an edge too. Not that we're going to be sticking him down just yet. It's going to be one of the last things to get put down. But just so I don't forget to add the colour. I think my vintage photo mini pad is drying up somewhat. I have got a re somewhere but I think Mr Ian's borrowed it because I tried to find it the other day and couldn't. There we go. Okay so let's just get rid of those bits of foam. So let's just see how we're going to put these down. I think corner and corner because this is going to be the right hand side of the page it's going to go there I think if we have these up there that way it helps because that's kind of diagonal that way because you've got the piece there and those pieces up there run from the center out to the outer page so if I put those there they're going to help draw the eye that way through the page so let's grab some more glue and we'll stick that down. And the reason I like to use this um, glue, this Elmer's glue stuff, is because you've got a little bit of wiggle room. So you can, even though you've stuck it down a lot, you can move it backwards and forwards and just wiggle it a little bit till you're happy before it grabs. So you've got a little bit of time just to position it where you want it. Okay. Yeah, just close that. And then we'll do the same thing down here. About there. And again, before I push down too much, let's just audition our piece, maybe a bit further out. Can I just move that up? Yeah, I can still move that up a little bit. Yeah, that's starting to look the bee's knees. So we'll just give that a little push down. Okay, so before we stick that down. Let's add a few more little pieces. So I've got this little postcard piece. Now I've already distressed this because um, I was going to use this on another piece a while ago and it just got thrown onto the desktop. But I'm going to use this because it's got a green stamp on it. So this is just using a little piece that was already 
available and just sitting on my desk and not doing anything, not earning its keep. So we're going to use that. There we go. So we've given it a reason for being. So I'm going to just tuck that just underneath there and then just bring that out a little bit just so it's coming into that green, breaking into that green and also breaking into that almanac image just a tad. And then when I put this back down again, so we're building up that nice little cluster there. Okay, like that. So next, I think I want to add some strips like washi tape strips. So what have we got? I've got this one that's got numbers. And so what did we use on the old, the other piece? We used that kind of chevron and the stars. Shall we kind of mirror that or use something different? Yeah, let's use something a little bit different. So we'll use this number piece of washi tape. Let's see if we can find the end. There it is. So we don't want a huge amount. And I'm going to put that just so it runs up there. And then we can either snip that off or just fold it over because that's going to get glued down anyway, like that. And then maybe just another piece, just a small bit, just up there, just breaking out from that edge. And then I think we're okay to stick this down now. Yeah, I think we're okay just to add a bit of glue onto our main rogue. Haven't thought of a name for this chappy yet. Normally I like to name my characters. But I'm not really sure what to call this one. So if you've got any suggestions of what you want to call him, pop them in the comments section below. What, who'd, what does it look like to you? <laughs> okay, so I can't decide whether it's American Navy or British Navy. I'm not quite sure that medal there might give it away. I'm not a military historian, so I couldn't tell you. Okay, so the next bit, I'm going to add a bit more green to that foreground. So again, just a touch, bring the background to the foreground. We've got green from the stamp, so this will just add a little bit of balance. Like so. so, drop a little bit of glue, Just shuffle the glue down in the bottle, and there we go. And I think I'm going to put that just up there in that top right hand corner, left hand corner. Don't let me left from me right today. I'm placing that just so it's got like a kind of even border all the way around to maybe just up a tad and it just cuts into, um, just eats into that corner of the photograph there just to give it a little bit of depth so you can see the different layers. Okay, and then next bit, so I'm going to add a tad more of that washi tape and I'm going to put that just on the edge of our rogue, whatever he's going to end up being called. 
and I think I kind of like that. But as I've done with all the other pages that I've done so far, I've added uh, a little piece of metallic embellishment onto each one just to kind of give it a little bit of texture. And I want to do the same thing for this one. So what I want to do is I want to add this little book plate and I'm going to pop that down there because normally I put dates on each one of the pages. So you can see there 08 1944, so that was August 1944. And we did these two pages in February. So 02 021, 02 021 and the first page I did in January 01 021. So for this month it's going to be 03 21. So there's my little strip but I want to put that inside that miniature book plate but didn't think ahead and I made it too small. So I've got a little piece of um, <clears throat> just like paper effect, if you like grungy paper effect that I've cut to the right size to fit on that book plate. So I'm just going to give that, not that you're going to see it because it's going to be behind the book plate, but I'll know it's there. Okay, so we'll just go around the edges because you'll probably see it from the top. <clears throat> and then this piece, again, I'll just add a little bit. I've cut it to the right width, but it's just not tall enough which is why I've had to place it on a carrier. All right, so let's get some glue. And just put a thin bead. Come on. Did I close it? No, I didn't. It's just been a pain, right. I apologize if I've rambled all, all the way through this one, but it just, it's one of those kind of pages that you just do and you do what comes into your head. Stream of consciousness, if you like. So I'll stick that down about there. So it's about halfway up. So that should theoretically now, when it's placed inside, let's just move that to one side so you can see it. When it's placed inside there, going to fit just nicely. I might just need to trim just a tiny tad off. It's not quite straight but hey, whatevs. There we go. Okay, so twist that a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I want to add this onto the page. So I'm just going to grab my pokey tool, just push through. And this is the reason why I like doing these um, <clears throat> not sticking them directly to the page, but doing them separate so that you can hide kind of any brads or feet, if you like, or any embellishments that you want to put. You can hide them behind and that way they don't go through the page. So I'll just make those holes a little bit bigger. Give that a swizzle round. And then we'll take the first one, push that through. And these little book plates, I believe, are from Michael's. These were sent to me in Happy Mail ages ago. Um, and they've just been sitting in my stash waiting just for the right page ever since or the right little project ever since when I spotted them this morning I thought oh that's just gonna be perfect okay so now before 
I carry on. I'm just going to turn those legs or the arms just that way and I'm going to grab some washi tape and I'm just going to put a piece across the back just to kind of stop myself from stabbing myself with those sharp points while I'm working with it. Okay, so the next thing then is we can slide that little piece into where it needs to go. Et voila. Look at that. I'm happy with that now. Like that. Hasn't taken that long. We've got three pieces of washi tape there which kind of draw the eye around the page. You've got the green and that yellow which is perfect. A nice accompaniment. So if I bring that page back in now, that can get stuck in there. I've just noticed that the backing paper is just slightly smaller than the page on this side, but that's okay. Don't mind that. So that can then get glued now onto the back. So I've got all the way around, over the top of that washi. Just put a little bit on there, just to make sure it holds. There we go. So we'll flip that over and that can get stuck down into the centre of that page. Just try and make sure we get equal all the way around. And I think I'm going to need just to put something heavy on the corners just to hold it down until it grabs. So we'll just, there we go, just some, something heavy. Oop, let's turn that over. As many heavy pots as I can find. Ooh, that one's really heavy. There we go. Okay, I'll be back in two minutes. Okay, so that page is pretty much stuck down now, particularly around the edges. So the last thing that I wanted to do was I've just taken that number plate back out again because I just want to add just a little bit of glue just on the back just to kind of stop it from falling out of the label plate at a later date. So I've just added a little bit of glue on and I'm just going to quickly just slide it back into position and then just using my pokey tool just to put it in place and then just to hold it down until it grabs which won't take long at all. That way it will stop it from coming out at a later date and being lost. And I'm just using the pokey tool just to push it down a little bit just to hold it and position it for best effect. Because we've still got that wiggle room. Maybe a bit further down. There we go. I think that's it. So that is done. So that is my 
Rogues Gallery page for the month of March. That's not to say I might not sneak in and do another one during March, who knows, but I may just wait until April. You never know. So I hope you've enjoyed me watching me put that little cluster collage art journal page together. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.